So I just bought the entire estate. How did we get here, you're asking yourself? That's a great story, let me tell you. Our story begins on August 2nd, 2021, when into my Instagram DM slides, Haley Marie Vintage, with a statement that was very intriguing. And thus began an epic quest, filled with lots of driving, fabrics, patterns, sweating, and making three new vintage-loving friends. Who I found! Who also made videos about the experience. And with a dash of surprising your husband who didn't fully grasp exactly how much vintage you had bought. Turn around. Uh, bed? That's full. I then spent the next two years getting everything listed, making video after video about the haul. The fabric sold the fastest as I did an hour-long video showcasing it all. The patterns were the slowest as it took me almost two years to get them up. And as I listed the final patterns, I got an email. You've got mail. With the subject line of fabric, which excited me and terrified me all at the same time. As it was indeed my friends from South Carolina ringing me to basically say they would like to sell me everything. And they meant everything. And then after some negotiations, it was time for another road trip. We made it. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go to bed now. I will see you in the morning. And that's how we ended up right here. Renting a U-Haul truck on an overcast South Carolina day, driving down roads that arguably should not have fit said U-Haul truck to go acquire this massive haul. So Stephanie hasn't been inside yet. And she got a truck and it may not be big enough. And she's gonna see how big that problem is in three, two, one, shit. We might have a problem. After briefly assessing the situation, seeing boxes being packed full of trim, and a sewing pattern cabinet rolling onto my very small truck, I had a realization. I think I may have done a dumb. A few moments later. Okay. I don't, I don't have an answer right now. That's all I'm- Two hours later. Well, we're not quite done with building one yet, but let's go take a look at building two because the truck is um dubious. So this is where we're at. Uh, the granny attic there is completely full. That's just the fabric from two tables. I'm screwed. So this is the second building that I do remember had quite a lot, quite a lot. Oh, good God. I might be in trouble. Ah! <laughs> Dear viewer, I can in fact assure you that she was in trouble. But sometimes the only way is through. With an occasional pause for nervous laughter, of course. <laughs> and as the truck grew ever closer to being completely full, she knew she would have to take things into her own hands. Uh, yeah. I'm not okay. But despite her best attempts, the truck still was not full of everything at this estate sale. But her friends in South Carolina assured her that it would all be donated in her name. Um, can't do shit with the lift. And so thusly, we set off back for Florida. The next day. Oh no. Oh no, this was a bad plan. This is a bad plan. <laughs> Was a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, 
it did the thing at least. And while I would love nothing more than to show you everything. Ready? Yep. Ready as I'll ever be. Yep. Okay. It's a little top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that I got. That would be a very long video and we don't have time for that today. So what I have done is I have divided it up into three categories, which are the good, the bad, and the fun ugly. Fun ugly? Fun ugly. Fun ugly. That's what we're going for. Now to be fair, I do think that certain things, once they cross over a certain point of ugly, cross back into fun, which is why this category exists. So I'm not dissing any of this fabric. In fact, if I had a plan for it, I would keep it all. But I can't because I would never get my garage back. So let's go ahead and start out with the good. Now because she did shut down in 1981, I know for a fact that absolutely none of these fabrics are older than 1981, including this delicious heart number. This delicious heart number is a sort of, it's a double knit polyester, but it kind of has that lightweight sweater feel, but without the fuzziness on the back. So it's more like a brisk fall jacket or, you know, April sweatshirt, but I just love these little hearts. They're so cute with the little arrows through them. And this fabric is super soft and super wide. To be very honest, I kept four and a half yards for myself because even though I do not like the 1980s, I like that because that is cute. And it should come as no surprise to you that I love all things fall and that includes leaves. Now, while I live in Florida, so I don't get the joy of raking and jumping into a giant pile of leaves on a lovely fall day, I do have leaf fabric to help me out. This lovely pink leaf fabric is really a like, kind of a slippery polyester, not quite acetate level of uh, texture heinousness, but it is definitely too far for me personally. But if you don't mind slippery things, if you need it for a lining, if you want to line the entire garment and then use this, I think this is just a truly spectacular fabric. And there does look to be about six yards left on this bolt. Now, we all love a good flower power moment, right? Yay! Yes, we do. Oh God, this is so heavy. There's so much of this, don't you worry. Look at the avocado flowers! I think one of my favorite things about this fabric is not only could I see this in an amazing pair of overalls, which not gonna lie, if this doesn't sell well, this probably will be turned into that for me. But as it's not a project that I would see myself doing anytime soon, I will go ahead and list all of this. But it's this nice heavier weight cotton, but the print is just to die for. And I'm sorry, any print that is named Peaches and Cream, 10 out of 10. We love it. Now, just cause we mentioned flower power doesn't mean that flower power is only the like 60s little bubbly flowers. Sometimes flower power looks like this crazy thing. Check out this black acetate. This is a super cool fabric. It would be great for like a really bright coat lining or I don't know, like maybe an accent piece. Again, the texture for me is not something that I can handle next to my skin, but I know that I'm not everybody. So if you can handle this type of slippery fabric next to your skin, this might be for you. Should I have counted how many yards there were before doing this? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks to be about seven and a half yards left on this one, which is more than enough for even a glorious, like flared swing coat. Hopping out of acetate land and into Terry cloth. Terry cloth, look at this. This is like a very light pile Terry. It is so freaking cool, y'all. Look at this. It looks like a little pink rug. It is such a lovely fabric. I love the drape. It's got a really great feel. It has a really nice drape and it has a really good stretch. And for those of you that are curious how I'm figuring out yardage on these, what I was told the last time I did one of these, because my audience is amazing, all of you, you told me that at the end of the bolt that is the folded side, you check for two wraps around the bolt and that's about a yard. So that's how I'm estimating all of these bolts without having to undo them and then redo them back. And this bolt right here seems to have about seven yards on it. And I do love a good novelty moment. This little cowboy print that I'm looking at here, it's got little sheep, it's got cowboys, it's got all types of beautiful swirls and flowers. I love this. It is so freaking cute. It's like a soft, almost a jersey, but not quite. It's, well, it's a 70s jersey knit. So like a t-shirt material, something along those lines. And it has a really great flow. There's also, super wide on this one. This is not one of the smaller bolts. 
This is definitely a beefy boy. Speaking of tall boys, this sweater knit, <laughs> dusty still, still dusty, still dusty. This lovely sweater knit is a brown, black, and white ribbed sweater knit fabric. So all you have to do to make one of the 1970s or 1980s sweaters is just literally cut it apart and make it. So saving you a step there. And this one also has a pretty decent stretch to it, so it's going to be a bit more forgiving. Plus, it is nice and warm as it is radiating into my arm in Florida, and I hate it. And keep a weather eye out for about a week or two after this video, because I do have two other colorways of this that are coming up as well. They just unfortunately got buried at the very large pile of fabric on the bottom of the table, and I can't quite reach it right now. But I will as soon as I can, and I will post it with this, this friend right here, so that they can all go find new homes together. Speaking of tall boys, we have this amazing print. What this is, is again, it's more like a t-shirt jersey, but what it is, is it looks like jeans and trim, but it's all knit and it all is stretchy and soft. And it is another one of the extra tall bolts. I love the flow of this. It moves really nicely and it's not itchy, which is really great. And I do have two bolts of this, so I will have to calculate how many yards there are and I will put it up on the website. Because yes, indeed friends, all of the ones that you see here are available on my website, backroomfinds.com, as this video launches. I am making a mess. Are we surprised? I hope not. Now, one of the favorite things I see folks make around Christmas time is those nightgowns and pajamas for the family. And oh boy, do I have some cotton flannel that is just the cutest. Like, look at it. And it's so soft, y'all. It's so soft. It's so lovely. I love the pink floral on white on this. It's just the best. And as you can see, there's not a small amount available. And in case flannel isn't your thing and you're more of a flocked friend, you will want a this one. This is a white poly cotton. It is a cross stitch flock pattern. Say that three times fast. Cross stitch flock pattern, cross stitch flock pattern, cross stitch flock pattern. <laughs> I had to spit the last one out. But it's really very sweet. It's sort of like a little geometric print. The flocking is all in great condition. There's no flock loss. There are gonna be a little bit of discolorations around the end of the bolt, but those should all wash out with the first wash. Nothing on here looks like it's going to be permanent. And as long as you do a gentle wash, and rinse, it will be fine. But because I am not taking the time to wash this one in particular, I am going to discount this as opposed to other flocked materials that you might see online. And now, the best of the best. That's right, not only are you looking at bark cloth, not only are you looking at cotton bark cloth, you are looking at novelty rope print in two different colorways bark cloth from the 70s. These two bark cloths are actually still on their original bolts. You can tell because the number on the ends of the bolts are also the numbers that are on the edge of the fabric. I am not going to lie. I saved some of this pink for me because there was a little bit of rust toward one of the ends. So we cut away the rusty part because it had literally eaten away the entire piece of fabric. And there was a little bit of rust stains a couple layers in. So, oh darn, I got to keep some. So hopefully I will find a good use for that, but there is still plenty on both of these bolts. There are yards and yards of fabric on here, y'all. So come get them while they're here. Cause they're so pretty. And now for the bad. Now you might be asking yourself, Stephanie, why are you outside with your garage behind you full of all the other fabrics? Well, friends, that is because the bad fabric isn't going in my house. So let me tell you the criteria for what makes a fabric too bad to enter the home. Step one, it has got enough bug bites in it for it to be the old country buffet for moths. So what that tells me is that somewhere in there probably is a little egg or two, and I don't want that anywhere inside the house. The garage is bad enough, but honestly, as soon as we're done here, it's going to head on out. Speaking of number two, water damage. And I don't mean, oh, it's just got a little mark about halfway up, let's wash that out. No, no. No, no, I'm talking that watermark runs entirely through the bolt. You can see the mold. You can see the mildew. Those pieces, sorry friends, sometimes you just can't save it. You can save some of them, yes. But just remember when you're going through, you have to balance out the time and effort it's going to take versus what actually you're going to get out of it in the end. And unfortunately with a lot of these that were severely water damaged, they were severely water damaged for the last 40 years. So that's not something that is really beneficial or worthwhile to take your time or my time to try and clean. And number three, 
severe other dying. And I don't mean <coughs> level of dying. I'm talking about this yellow fabric was right next to a red one. How do we know? Because it looks pink all the way through. That's not something that you can change. And also, especially on fabrics like acetate and things like that, that are already probably dry rotted a little bit, that dyeing and that water damage from the dye, the new dye job that it got, that is something that will not really be able to be fixed quite too easily. And there is new acetate that probably is the color you want without all the effort. And so while I do try and save a lot of this from the landfill, there will always be just a few bolts that don't quite make the cut. And the final reason why they won't quite make the cut is because of four black mold. Now this black mold needs to be heavy. If I see a little bit of mold, I can wash that out. But if that mold is going top to tail all the way through all the layers, that's not something that I can save. That's not something you would want in your house because it's not going to be safe for you even if I wash and wash and wash and wash and wash it. And that leads us to the fun ugly! The fun ugly. Why did I name it that? Again, these are the fabrics that I have deemed so ugly that they have crossed back into fun. So what ones do I qualify those as? Well, I had to keep the, um, <clears throat> list small because oh boy are there more than this but these were the choice ones that i decided to share with you all would anyone care to look like a walking rug because i can accomplish that right now this is more like a peach skin style fabric that it seriously looks like a whole bunch of rugs that have been laid together and then printed on a peach skin it does have a pile so you do have to be wary of the fuzz and i don't mean the woo kind i mean the you know kind kind where you know everywhere so just be advised there is a pile to this and it will fuzz on you and next up is do you want to be a reptile you could be a psychedelic reptile okay bye no but seriously you could be a very neon pink and avocado color snake print polyester not quite spandex, but definitely has some stretch to it. Um, I have no real words for this one other than... That's it. That's my only question is... It's definitely on the slippery side. It's not something that my personal... I could not wear this. But again, if you don't mind a little bit of stretch, if you don't mind a little bit of slinky plastic, then this is perfectly fine. And heavens to Betsy, it's quite loud and there does look to be about six yards left on this fine bolt right here no your eyes aren't fooling you yes this is like one of those mystery puzzles at the dagon doctor's office when you're trying to unfocus your eyeballs and see what's in the design this is a very loud gray and sort of mustard yellow polyester please say i think is the best way to describe that because it is wild it does unfortunately though have a little bit of a fade line and it does run through most of the bolt that way. So just keep that in mind that if you do this, you might have to get a little creative or if it's so loud, maybe it won't notice, but just be advised there is gonna be a fade line on these. And so know that going in. Looks to be about 13 yards of these shenanigans left on this bolt. And I cannot wait to see what some of y'all make with this. Cause whatever it is, we're gonna see ya before we hear ya. Can't, don't, shouldn't. What do they all have in common? Apostrophes. Why are there apostrophes on a fabric? I have no idea, but I kind of love it. This is a double knit polyester, so just be very prepared for that. This is very thick and it is very warm. This would be great for like a jumpsuit, palazzo pants, anything that needs a lot of room and billow, but can be heavy. I, I truly have no words for this. It is so funny. When I saw it originally, I was like, wait, is that, is that an apostrophe? Why is there an apostrophe of all the things? But they did. And there does look to be about 10 yards of this fine shouldn't, can't, don't fabric apostrophe on the bolt. It worked better in my head. You might want to pull out your sunglasses for the next one because this fabric is bright. I don't even really know how to describe this fabric. It looks like if a space needle was top, stacked on top of a space needle, stopped on top of a space needle, stopped. Like that's kind of what the vibe it's giving me. Again, this is another polyester double knit and it will be very warm. So be warned for that one. But it is actually kind of a plush feeling. So it's not the world's worst double knit. 
in case you like really just hate all of them. This one actually is quite soft and even I think that I could pull off wearing this one. As even opposed to the apostrophe one which is slightly scratchy, this one doesn't really have that scratchy texture at all. It's very soft. And then out of the space needle and into the jungle. This crazy acetate cheetah print? Leopard print? I'm actually not sure which one that is. But either way, it is slippery, it is slinky. It would be a fantastic coat lining, I'm not gonna lie. Flash a coat lining of this, that would look absolutely wild. I know the puns are bad. This is the channel. This is what you get. These are the jokes you get, boys. And there is a bunch of this available. It is a little bit on the thicker side of acetate, so it's not the super thin flowy stuff, which is why I think it would make a really nice coat lining. And there's a ton of it. And it's called Bewitched. Like, why? I don't know, but it's funny. And I hope you didn't put your sunglasses too far away because the next fabric is also extremely bright. Because this bright blue, purple, and I think mustard herringbone, it might just make your eyes bleed just a little, but like in the best vintage way, not like in a bad way. This is 100% acrylic yarn on top, and the backing you see here is acetate tricot. Now the one thing I will say is that you will see that there is some discoloration on the tricot itself, but I have given this all a very thorough tug and there is no dry rot in there. It just got a little sun bleached on the back, but thankfully it didn't transition over to the acrylic on the front. I would definitely advise this as a coat material and then use one of the linings on the inside because this acetate does not it, it has a weird, slippery, slinky texture that does not appeal to me at all. And now for the final fun ugly, we must end with Duck Cunt. Now listen, I know very well and good that this is not actually Duck Hunt fabric, but you cannot sit here and tell me that this fabric does not look like the ducks that are flying out of the bushes in those moments. It's not branded duck hunt, it's not licensed duck hunt, but that is exactly what this fabric makes me think of. So I do hope that someone enjoys a duck hunting because it is also a polyester double knit as well, but it does have some good stretch. And while we might be done duck hunting, I think you might enjoy continuing the hunt with the original video from two years ago. This has the entire story, and if you really want, it also has the original fabric haul, some of which I do still have on my website. And of course, YouTube thinks you'll like that one right there. And next time, friends, we'll look at some of the patterns. Bye. We will not be talking about the safety pin that is currently attaching this microphone because I lost the clip during the move. <laughs> Excellent.